Good morning, dear, good morning, dear colleagues. Those who need interpretation, you can get the interpretation over there, the headphones. Коллеги, кому нужны наушники, пожалуйста, в э, пресс-конференции будет на английском языке. Кому нужны наушники, в начале зала наушники с переводом синхронным. One, one. Good morning, dear colleagues. We are starting the press conference uh, of the International Advisory Panel to present its review of the Ukrainian authorities' investigations into the Odessa events of May 2014. The report will be presented by the International Advisory Panel, which was set up by the Secretary General of the Council of Europe back in 2014. The report will be presented by Sir Nicholas Bratza, the chair of the International Advisory Panel, former president of the European Court of Human Rights. Two other members of the panel, Vladimir Butkevich, a former judge of the European Court of Human Rights, and Oleg Pilogov, former prosecutor of Ukraine, are also here to take part in the presentation. Mr. Krista Giacomopoulos, Special Advisor of the Council of Europe Secretary General for Ukraine is also taking part in the press conference. First of all, the report will be presented by Sir Nicholas Bratza. Then a short intervention by, a Chris, uh, by Mr. Christos Giacomopoulos will follow, and then you will have a chance to pose your questions either in English or in Ukrainian. So I give the floor to Sir Nicholas Bratz, the chair of the International Advisory Panel, former president of the European Court of Human Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> it's a privilege for me to be able to present the report of the International Advisory Panel uh, on its review of the investigations into the <coughs> tragic events in Odessa, uh, which resulted in numerous deaths and serious injuries uh, on the 2nd of May 2014. The mandate of the panel, which was established by the Secretary-General of the Council of Europe in April of last year, with the original role of overseeing the investigations into the violent events in Maidan, was subsequently extended to cover the events in Odessa. The panel delivered its report on the investigations in Maidan at the end of March this year, at the same time as it began its current review. I'm here today with the other two members of the panel, Mr. Vladimir Butkovich on my right and Mr. Oleg and Pilogov on my left. May I reiterate at the outset the two points I made when presenting the panel's Maidan report. First, it was not the panel's function to conduct or to assist in the investigation of the events in Odessa. That was and remains exclusively a matter for the Ukrainian authorities themselves, 
and more particularly for the Public Prosecution Service uh, and the Ministry of the Interior, which shared responsibility for the various pre-trial investigations. The panel's role under its mandate was a very different one. It was to examine whether the investigations that were and are carried out at, in, at national level met and continue to meet all the requirements of the European Convention on Human Rights uh, as developed through the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. These requirements are in summary that the investigations are independent, that they are carried out promptly and expeditiously, that they are effective and that they allow for sufficient public scrutiny and sufficient involvement of the victims and the families of the victims. The second point I would stress is that it was not the panel's task to examine the quality of the investigation of individual cases of death or injury, or to establish for itself the particular facts which resulted in those deaths or injuries. Its role was rather to examine and report on whether the investigations at national level, seen as a whole, complied with international standards. The panel's report has been prepared after receiving detailed submissions, both in writing and in a series of meetings in Kiev and Odessa, with representatives of the investigating authorities and other official bodies, and of non-governmental organizations. The meetings took place between June and August of this year, and the end of August was set as the cutoff date for the filing of submissions to the panel. As in the case of the Maidan report, the current report is a detailed one in which the panel have found that in several respects, the investigations carried out at national level have failed to satisfy the requirements of the convention. Again, as in the earlier report, the panel expressly acknowledged the very substantial challenges which had confronted the authorities when taking on their investigatory role. Four specific challenges were identified. First, the sheer scale and breadth of the investigations into the events in Odessa, given the number of persons involved in the violent disorder on the 2nd of May, and the resulting toll of dead and injured. Second, the lack of specialist investigators with experience in dealing with large-scale disorders. Third, the competing demand, demands made of the authorities in pursuing other complex investigations, including those concerning the violent events in Maidan and the abuse of power and economic crimes committed by high-ranking officials of the former regime. And fourth, the problems posed by the identification of those responsible, since many of the participants in the mass disorder concealed their identities with masks and scarves, and since witnesses were reluctant to come forward to provide evidence to the authorities. These factors undeniably placed an additional burden on the investigative authorities in their attempts to unravel an already complex case. However, as the report makes clear, these challenges could not excuse failings or shortcomings which did not inevitably flow from them. The authorities remain under a continuing obligation to take all steps to ensure that the investigations comply with the requirements of Articles 2 and 3 of the European Convention. In several respects, the, pan the panel found that they did not comply. The conclusions in the report must be read as a whole, but I would like to give a very brief summary of some of the principal findings of the panel. As appears from the report, three main investigations were opened into the violent events in Odessa. These covered, first, the conduct of the police in respect of the mass disorder on the 2nd of May and the release of detainees on the 4th of May. Second, the mass disorder itself in the city center and Kulikore Pole, and the fire in the trade union building. And third, the contact of the staff of the state emergency service in respect of the fire. The first investigation is being conducted by the Prosecutor General's office. 
The other two investigations are currently being conducted by the main investigation department of the Ministry of the Interior. It was the view of the panel that both the second and third investigations lacked the necessary degree of institutional and practical independence. As to the investigation into the mass disorder and fire, the panel noted that there had been numerous allegations, supported by video evidence, of collusion between certain members of the police force deployed to protect public order and activists involved in the mass disorder in the city centre. This made it, in the view of the panel, essential that the investigation into the mass disorder as a whole should be carried out by a body independent of all actors under investigation. The Ministry of the Interior did not satisfy this criterion. The same is true of the investigation into the conduct of the State Emergency Service. That service, while a separate state body, is not only financially accountable to the Ministry of the Interior and funded from the straight state budget through funds allocated to the Ministry, but its activities have, since April 2014, been coordinated and directed by the Cabinet of Ministers through the Minister of the Interior, who participates in the process of the appointment and dismissal of the head of the service and may represent it in government. This hierarchical relationship with the Ministry was found by the panel to be problematic. The panel further emphasized, as it had in its Maidan report, the importance of the appearance of independence and impartiality in the investigation in a context such, a context such as the present, where the public trust in the criminal justice system was at stake. It expressed its concern in this regard that even though the mass disorder had involved a conflict between two opposing groups of activists, all but one of the 23 suspects currently being tried for participating in the mass disorder belonged to the same group, <coughs> namely the pro-federalists. Moreover, all those detained, including the seven defendants still detained some 18 months later, come from that same group. By contrast, none of the suspects belonging to the pro-unity group has been subjected to pre-trial attention, save for a few days immediately after the events. These include one person who has been charged with the offence of murder. The report further contains a series of criticisms of the lack of effectiveness of the investigations. This was considered first to result from the organisation of the investigative work between the Prosecutor General's Office and the Ministry of the Interior, which the panel found to be inefficient and not conducive to the effectiveness of the investigation. As in the Maidan report, the panel found that the reduction made in the size of the investigating teams of both authorities had had a detrimental effect on the progress, quality and effectiveness of the investigation of such complex cases. This was indeed expressly acknowledged by certain of the investigators who gave evidence to the panel. The quality of the investigations was also found by the panel to be deficient in a number of respects. In particular, it took two weeks for the authorities to obtain a warrant for the arrest of the principal suspect, by which time he had absconded from the jurisdiction. Despite the terms of the report of the ombudsperson drawing attention to discrepancies in the police records, it took the authorities nearly a year to conclude that the WAVE plan, which had been designed to counter mass disorder, had never in fact been implemented uh, and that the records had been falsified. The panel also found serious deficiencies in the way in which the authorities gathered and secured the evidence, notably through their failure to seal off the trade union building immediately after the fire, and their fa failure promptly and diligently to carry out certain forensic examinations. Even more striking in the panel's view were the deficiencies in the investigation of the conduct of the State Emergency Service. Despite the fact that the fire brigade, <coughs> that it had taken the fire brigade 40 minutes to arrive on the scene of the fire, 
a pre-trial investigation was not commenced for over five months, and even then only following the complaint of a third party. It was not until December 2014 that any real effort was put into pursuing the investigation, by which time the head of the SES in the Odessa region had left the service. These deficiencies were found by the panel seriously to have compromised the effectiveness of the investigations. The panel also expressed concern about certain aspects of the prosecution and trial of the suspects. Particular criticism was made of the decisions to terminate the pre-trial investigations in two cases on grounds of the insufficiency of evidence. The panel also noted the adverse impact on the progress of the court proceedings, which stemmed from the repeated recusal of judges and the decision to charge 21 individuals in a single indictment without individualizing the charges against them. The panel found that as a direct consequence of these deficiencies, the investigative response to the violent events had been significantly protracted. The panel was further of the view that the events in Odessa were of such significance that the authorities were required to provide sufficient information about the investigations to facilitate meaningful public scrutiny of them. Here again, failings were found. It was acknowledged that efforts had been made by the investigatory authorities to provide the public with basic information and updates on the investigations. However, the panel found that there was no effective communication policy in place. As a result, the information was sometimes inconsistent and uneven and provided with insufficient regularity. It found also that there were no coordinated measures in place directly and regularly to keep the victims and next of kin informed about the progress of the investigations. Having reviewed the current status of the various case files, <coughs> the overall conclusions of the panel was that substantial progress had not been made in the investigations. While this might to some extent be explained by the challenges faced, the deficiencies found had undermined the authorities' ability to establish the full circumstances of the events in Odessa on that day and to bring to justice those responsible. I would wish, to, however, to, to, however, to end on a more positive note. The panel was struck at the at outset by the considerable amount of information about the tragedy which had been made available to the public at an early stage in the reports of the Temporary Investigation Commission and of the Ombudsperson. This was more than matched by the invaluable work of the 2nd of May group which made a major contribution to an understanding of the events of that day. In its concluding remarks, the panel drew attention to the need for closer cooperation with the group by the investigative authorities. However, the panel also acknowledged the cooperation which it, it had itself received from those authorities in what has been a demanding form of inquiry and in an acutely difficult time for the country. It noted, too, what it had found to be the efforts made to preserve continuity in the investigations and to keep the public informed about the progress made. The panel went on to note that some further progress had been made during the course of this year. In particular, further charges have been brought in the case concerning police misconduct and an inter-agency group of experts has been established to examine how the fire started and progressed, as well as the conduct of the SES during the course of the fire. The panel was also encouraged by the assurances that further cases were under preparation and would be sent to court soon. But the panel could not but note that these developments had occurred a considerable time after the events that were the subject of the investigations. As was the case in the panel's Maidan review, these events had, in the panel's view, only served to reinforce the need for the establishment of the State Bureau of Investigation. While welcoming the more active steps recently taken to establish such a body, 
The panel concluded by emphasizing the importance that the Bureau should meet all the requirements of independence and effectiveness demanded by the European Convention and the case law of the European Court. As in the case of the Maidan tragedy, the tragic events of the 2nd of May in Odessa have left a deep scar on Ukrainian society. The investigation of those events is far from over and the challenges still facing the authorities remain formidable. It is earnestly to be hoped that with the benefit of the views of the panel, further progress in the investigations will be made, that public confidence in the investigation will be restored, and that some closure will be brought to this further painful chapter in Ukraine's history. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Christos Giacomopoulos, who is the Special Advisor of the Council of Europe's Secretary General for Ukraine, uh, who will make a short intervention. And then you have a possibility to pose your questions. Thank you very much. I would uh, first like to underline, as uh, the President of the International Advisory Panel, Sir Nicholas Bratz, has said that the purpose of the International Advisory Panel is not to investigate, but to supervise the in, uh, investigations in the light of the European Convention of Human Rights and the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. The objective was to identify as early as possible the deficiencies in the investigation that might lead to violation of the European Convention of Human Rights in order to allow for corrective action to be taken. Some of the findings of the International Advisory Panel point to clear structural problems, some to specific deficiencies linked to the specific investigation, but also these point out to inadequacies, to shortcomings in the practice of investigative authorities. The Council of Europe believes that the authorities need to take the benefit of these findings and address seriously these problems efficiently and promptly, taking concrete corrective action each time such corrective action is possible. The Council of Europe will support the efforts of the authorities as regards the structural problems and issues such as the lack of independence of the investigative authorities, the lack of quality, lack of thoroughness in the investigative process inter alia as regards the capacities of the investigative authorities to deal with mass disorders. These can be addressed in the framework of assistance that the Council of Europe is already providing to the Ukrainian authorities in respect of the reform of the General Prosecutor's Office, and as regards the institution of a State Bureau of Investigation as required by the Criminal Procedure Code, in particular in order to investigate human rights violations and crimes committed by state officials, and as regards also the reform of the Ministry of Interior, in particular the law on the national police. Other deficiencies, such as the lack of experience of investigative authorities in dealing with specific uh, issues will be uh, addressed by capacity building measures and activities, in particular as regards, for example, the absence of policies in respect of communication. Aspects such as the selection of officials, the training of officials, the accountability and the assessment of their performance are crucial in this respect. The Council of Europe is very grateful to the International Advisory Panel for the extremely thorough work that has been performed. It believes that the International Advisory Panel's report, I would say reports because also the Maidan report uh, refers to similar deficiencies, we believe that these reports need to be the basis of a roadmap to sustain the reforms that have already been initiated and to make them more concrete 
and more targeted. We remain confident that this will be the case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Giacomopoulos. Now you will have a chance to pose your questions. Uh, there should be a microphone. Uh, uh, there, is a, there is a microphone in the end of the room. Please identify yourself and indicate which media you work for. And we would like to encourage you to pose the questions related <coughs> to the topic of today's press conference, which is the report on the international advisory panels. We the panel members will not be able to answer other questions that do not fall into the scope of today's event. Дякую вам. Питання до пана Братца. Я Яніна Соколовська, представляю видання «Комерсант». Чи вважаєте ви, що ці недоліки в розслідуванні були спровоковані українською владою зумисно? Чи це такі недоліки, які виникають в силу такого, що є така система в Україні влади, яку треба змінювати саме у силових структурах? I think the deficiencies uh, were in no sense in intentional. They were deficiencies which were inherent in the system. Uh, they were deficiencies which, which were um, also made uh, the... Uh, I, I think... I, I, I want to emphasize again what I indicated at the beginning, that there were these events were very special events which created very special challenges for the authorities and in particular I highlighted what the panel had said uh, that it was made clear that uh, a, a mass disorder of this scale certainly with the consequences that flowed from it was something very unusual wholly exceptional so far as the authorities were concerned and inevitably co caused uh, serious problems for them, which I think then highlighted the deficiencies which already existed within the, uh, within the system. So no, I, I, I don't, the panel has never suggested that there was, uh, that these deficiencies were intentionally uh, created by the, uh, by the Ukrainian authorities. <coughs> Other questions, colleagues? Please your, raise your hand. Uh, Sergei Sidorenko, European Pravda. Uh, I've noticed that in your report uh, in, and in your speech, uh, there were some references to inequal uh, treatment with those uh, uh, pro Maidan and anti Maidan. Uh, would you say that this treatment uh, was uh, um, like? expected for you and uh, uh, could you comment more in more detail uh, this issue of your report thank you very much uh, we've drawn attention as a panel um, to the importance of the uh, appearance of um, impartiality in carrying out the investigation um, we, we certainly did not go with the uh, ex expectation that there was uh, prejudice in favor of one group rather than the other. But we did draw attention, as you will find in the report, to our concern about the fact that those who were charged and those who were detained came effectively all from one group, even though the mass disorder had clearly involved uh, parties from both groups. We've used the term pro-federalist, pro-unity, um, uh, but we've explained in the report that these were used as, as terms of of art and that we weren't intending to ascribe to particular people, um, particular political or, 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 or other, other views. Colleagues, other questions? I would like to also note that in the end of the press conference you will all receive the copies of the report in English and in Ukrainian as well as press releases. 
Please, uh, next question. Сергій Кутняков, Фонд пам'яті Небесної Сотні і агенція Маннінформ. Питання до доповідача. Чи планує ваша організація дослідити події 9 травня, які трапилися в Маріуполі, тобто саме про Одесу і Маріуполь, була інформація розглянута в Організації Об'єднаних Націй. Ну і також пам'ятаємо, що Маріуполь був створений грецькими переселенцями з Криму в результаті депортації і етноциду армянського і грецького етносу Російської імперії в XVIII столітті, що викликало аналогічні події в 1944 році з депортацією і, відповідно, з армянським етносом в 1915 році в Турції. Дякую. Specific mandate. Our mandate was originally, as I've indicated, to oversee the investigations into the events in Maidan. It was subsequently extended to cover the events in Odessa of the 2nd of May, but it was made clear that that was the full extent of the mandate of the panel and that it would have no further responsibility for carrying out an oversight of other investigations. Uh, and that has been uh, made quite clear, and you will find is made clear in the introduction to our report. Uh, our, our mandate is now complete. Colleagues, <coughs> other questions? Доброго дня, Тетяна Мазур, Amnesty International в Україні. Скажіть, будь ласка, чи представили ви вже результати дослідження Органам, представниками органів влади української, і якщо так, яка була реакція? The, we have presented the report to both the Secretary General and to the Ukrainian authorities in advance of the meeting. Uh, we, there has been no reaction so far as uh, we are concerned. No doubt there will be a reaction at some stage following, uh, following this, uh, this, this press briefing. I should indicate as well that we will be going tomorrow as a panel to Odessa itself to carry out a similar uh, press briefing. <coughs> Other questions, colleagues? Katrina Lutska, Nemetska Hvila. На самому початку ви казали про те, що розслідування почалися вже неправильно, тому що будинок був неопочатаний вчасно, свідки були невчасно допитані. Ну, і, власне, часу пройшло також багато. На вашу думку, от зараз, чи є достатньо у розслідування фактів для того, аби звинувачених і винних притягти до відповідальності? One would hope... So, um, you're quite right that we did indicate in particular uh, a, a deficiency in the failure to seal off the trade union building immediately after the events and to allow access to the general public at a very early stage, which was acknowledged by the authorities themselves to have been a, an incorrect thing to, um, to do. Uh, as I also indicated, though, we have been heartened by the fact that a decision was taken in April to set up an interagency investigation, among other things, into the cause of the fire and to the responsibility of the SES. Uh, it is late in the day, I accept, but it is, I think, an important uh, initiative, this, which could well uh, result in uh, further proceedings being brought and in further progress being made in the investigations which are currently uh, going on. Colleagues, further questions? Uh, please. Uh, you referred that uh, your mandate is over, uh, but earlier you said that uh, uh, your mandate uh, includes uh, like analysis, where the investigation is in line with uh, CRE rules and, is your, and uh, uh, convention for human rights uh, uh, 
currently. So would you continue uh, monitoring uh, further development in investigation, uh, both of Odessa events and Maidan events, or you just finish your work on this stage? Thank you. Our own work is, as a panel is complete. Um, our function was to carry out an oversight of the investigations into both Maidan and Odessa. That we have done and we have reported on our results. It then is both for the authorities with the assistance of other parts of the uh, Council of Europe to which uh, Mr. Giacomopoulos has uh, has made reference to try and ensure further progress being made in the investigations into both Maidan uh, and into Odessa. But so far as the panel is concerned, uh, our work is complete. Colleagues, are there any other questions? <coughs> well, okay. Another question, very short, please, because we are a bit short of time. Благодарю вашу организацию за ту роль и ту деятельность, которая была проведена по расследованию форс-мажорных обстоятельств в Одессе. Как бывший пресс-секретарь Федерации греческих обществ Украины хотел спросить о позиции, об отношении вас к Одессе, которая стала отправной точкой для освобождения Греции в 1821 году. Вы помните эту ситуацию? Общество Филики Этерия и Александр Испеланти, который стал стартом в праздновании Дня независимости Греции. Кстати, из Пиланти был исключен императором Александром I с воинской службы, и ему было запрещено возвращаться в Россию. Keep our questions very short and relevant to the topic of today's uh, press conference. We would be grateful. You will forgive me if I don't attempt an answer to this. We have at a panel a very specific role which we have carried out. We made uh, a number of visits to Odessa, but that was for the specific purpose of focusing on the investigations which have been carried out into the events of the 2nd of May, and I don't think it would be appropriate for me to, to attempt to go beyond that and to comment on uh, other aspects, uh, historical aspects in particular relating to Odessa. <coughs> Colleagues, are there any other questions from the media? Well, if this is not the case, thank you very much for um, attending the press conference. As I said, my colleagues will give you the text of the report in English and in Ukrainian and the press releases in English and Ukrainian. Thank you very much.